Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, June 21st, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Streaming video content to mobile devices and computers is, of course, a big business these days. Cisco offers a number of solutions to allow for that to happen to TV providers. Now, in the UK, Sky's Now TV video player that is distributed by Cisco did include not just a certificate, but also a private key for drmlocal.cisco.com. Um, the certificate now has been revoked, uh, so the risk should be somewhat diminished. And of course, uh, this particular host name is really only used uh, by uh, this video player platform. But yet again, if you include things like private keys, passwords, and the like in software that you're shipping to customers, you have to assume that they will leak pretty quickly. It doesn't look like in this case, the key was actually particularly obfuscated or protected. It may have just been included by mistake. Now, if you're using Windows, you probably know that Windows can send error reports whenever Windows software crashes. Now, usually these error reports are going to Microsoft, but you can also locally collect them. And Renato Marino today gave us a real nice guest diary that illustrates how these error reports can be used. He actually used it in a recent incident that he's describing in this diary, and he's providing you with some examples what these reports look like and what you can learn from them. Now, one reason software crashes is often memory corruption. Memory corruption errors are also one of the leading causes of vulnerabilities. So detecting them is certainly important, but not always easy. To make things easier, we now have a new library, at least for those of you on Unix that use glibc. The library was written by Deval Kapil and it's called libdheap. It is being injected into already compiled binary so you don't need the source code you can just inject that uh, library into an already compiled uh, binary that uh, you purchased that you downloaded and use it in order to detect uh, for example invalid freeze chunks with overlaps and a number of other overflows or underflows when it comes to memory allocation so a pretty neat tool you'll get the stack trace out of it whenever it finds a problem that it detects so you can really use it nicely to find these vulnerabilities in existing software. And when Let's Encrypt was originally released and promised free TLS certificates for everybody, one of the key features was not just the fact that you could get free certificates, but also that certificates installation and maintenance would become a lot simpler. In part, to accomplish this goal, Let's Encrypt did develop what they call the Automatic Certificate Management Environment or the ACME protocol. Now, this protocol was very specific to Let's Encrypt up to now, but it has gotten uh, quite a good following beyond Let's Encrypt. Now, the next version of uh, this protocol appears to be on its way to become an IETF standard. It has uh, been published now as a draft, so no RFC yet, but an RFC may be coming in the next uh, few months based on the draft. The draft is currently in version 6. With this protocol becoming a standard, of course, the hope is that its adoption will grow. This will make it easier for people to actually request and use Let's Encrypt certificates, but actually may also lead to this protocol being used by other certificate authorities outside of Let's Encrypt. And Microsoft published a very detailed technical blog post about the recent shadow broker exploits and how they're mitigated in Windows 10. Now, Windows 10 introduced a number of security features that are summarized in this blog post, and it is explained how they actually interact with these exploits and how they prevent some of them from actually affecting your system. So, 
a pretty nice pretty detailed blog post can't really do it justice here in uh, this short podcast so if you're interested uh, please uh, follow uh, the link in the show notes well and this is it for today thanks again for listening and as always if you like this podcast let others know about it tweet about it post about it in your social network and i also added recently a list of classes i'll be teaching in the near future so uh, if you get a chance if you're interested take a look at this i actually just added a class that hasn't been posted yet in berlin germany at the end of October. I'll be teaching the intrusion detection in depth class. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.